and only great to see you. We'll start with the, the big positive news this week. Uh, Dom Solanke signing a new contract. He joined Bournemouth in 2019. Has obviously been a figurehead for the club as a striker for a number of years. And the fact that going into his prime, arguably at 26 years old, he's still got his best years ahead of him. How pleased were you to get that done? I'm uh, really pleased. I think it's a similar situation to Philip Billings that we talked in past weeks. Uh, I think it's very good for the club. It's very good because uh, he he wants, like you said, to spend the, the probably the best years of his career here and uh, playing for, for Baltimore. And uh, also he's a player that right now is doing really well. He's performing really well. And uh, we hope uh, he continues the the same way. How much do you feel he can improve? How much are you looking forward to working with him on the, the training pitch and trying to develop his game even more? I think he has the attributes, he has the willingness to improve. Uh, he does a lot of things very well. Obviously, you, 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 you talk to every striker, everyone wants to score more goals because it's the first thing you look when you are analyzing a striker. But I'm sure if he continues playing this way, helping the team this way, the team will provide him the chances and he will score the goals for sure. Just come off the back of the first international break of the season. Has everyone come back fit? What's the injury news ahead of the weekend? Yes, uh, uh, today was the first day we, we could train with uh, Marcos, with Junior and with uh, Luis. With Luis, in his case, it was the first, actually the first day he trained here with us because it's true that we sent him two weeks ago, but uh, today was the first day he could uh, train with his uh, teammates. Uh, and now we, we only have injured uh, Tyler Adams, Alex Scott, and the ones that have been more time, like uh, Fredericks and Mark Anders. Just one of the players coming back from international duty who's had a great last few weeks, David Brooks. Three goals in three games for Bournemouth and for Wales. Scored that late winner for, for Wales against Latvia, which would have obviously given him the headlines, particularly through what he's been through. Are you seeing a player now that, that's really free from the past and, and enjoying his football and, and very slowly getting back to the player that he was many years ago? Yes, with, uh, with uh, Brooks it has been uh, uh, really easy for me because from day one he was ready to compete for the position. He was ready to train. Uh, he knows that uh, he has a strong competition now with uh, new players also arriving, but he's doing really well. He's pushing every single training. Uh, it's good that he can add to his game these goals that he has scored lately, starting, playing as a sub. And uh, uh, he's, he's doing really well. Does it almost make it difficult to not play him at the moment with the form that he's in? Yes, I, I have tough decisions to make, and it's the the, the, the things that we like. It's uh, always difficult to make the right decisions to see, uh, especially the forwards, the forwards, the, the wingers. Uh, they have to know that it's going to be a strange that they finish games. They play 90 minutes because uh, we want to keep the high intensity, so they have to get used to play 60, to play 30, to play 15, to play 70 minutes. And then they know th this and they, they have to compete for, for minutes. Up next, Chelsea, here at the Vitality Stadium on Sunday, live on Sky Sports. It will be a challenge. When you look at the way Chelsea have started the season, over £200 million spent, a new head coach has gone in. How do you assess their start and what have you learned from your analysis about this Maurizio Pochettino side and perhaps why it's not been as effective as people thought? I think they are. They have been in control of all the games they've played. I think, uh, actually, I think the, the, they are the team with more possession right now in these four first games. So they have been in control of the games. Probably they haven't got the points they have deserved because uh, it's difficult to explain a lot of times, no? When you play, you have more chances than the opponent and you finish losing the game. But it's, uh, this is football, it's about scoring goals. And for sure, they want to come here and also uh, win the game and start winning winning games. But uh, we have to give them a really, a really tough game. And on Maurizio Pochettino, someone you'll probably know from La Liga, both playing in the same division, 
for a number of years. I know he's older than you by 10 years, but there was a little crossover when you were both still playing at the highest level in Spain. What do you remember about him as a, as a player and, and what have you watched in terms of his coaching development? Ah, he was a very good player playing for, for Espanol, for PSG. After when he was coaching Espanol, I, I also played against them. Uh, he has been really successful as a player, as a coach uh, in different teams, uh, lastly Tottenham, PSG. Uh, and now he has another challenge with, with a very good squad. But we, it is the Premier League. Every week uh, you're facing top level players, top level coaches. And now it's uh, our turn at home and we want to give them a, a really tough game. And just a couple of final ones for me. Um, obviously, the last time we saw you was before the, in, in, uh, the window had closed. There was a, a lot of late activity. Kiefer Moore nearly left, but he didn't. Pats and Daka nearly came in, but he didn't. You ended up with Luis Sinistera confirmed at 20 past 11. How much have you seen from him already? In, and is he ready to be involved this weekend? Uh, I think he's ready, uh, but it's true that today was the first training he has done with his teammates. It was a really strange situation because he could come to the stadium, he watched our game against Brentford, but he, he, he couldn't train with the team because he went straight away with Colombia. He has played some minutes there and he has come really fit. I think he's ready to help his, his teammates, but it's true that we haven't had time to spend with him and to know him better. And just finally, there was a lot of speculation on deadline day about Lloyd Kelly and a rejected offer from, from Tottenham for the player. Is he OK in terms of his mindset? Because he's had a tough 12 months, you know, with, with injuries. He had the, the captaincy taken off of him last season. And when you get linked with a big move to Tottenham and it, and it falls through, it doesn't happen. How is his mindset? Is he available? Is he ready to play and commit to Bournemouth? Yes, he has trained really well these past two weeks. I think they, ha they have been very good weeks for him because he came from an injury, so he needed the, the workload. And also we were here just training with nine, ten players, so we could focus more on them. So I think they have been really successful weeks for him. Uh, probably the last day of the market was difficult, not only for him, for, uh, you said, Kiefer, for Jaden Anthony, for Luis, who came here at the end, uh, for different players. But once the uh, market is closed, I think everyone is really focused, willing to push, and uh, he's ready to help us here. And Tony, just on that Lloyd Kelly theme, has he shown you the way he's trained that he's ready to play or have you had to have some talks with him or maybe um, the board or whoever have, have spoken to him to make sure he's focused? No, he has trained really well these past two weeks. I think he he's ready to help the team. He knows his, his best interest is to play well, to try to compete for minutes. Everyone is trying to push and he has been uh, training really, really well, yeah. You've spoken already about some of the guys who've travelled around the world. Is that quite a new thing for you to have to deal with as a coach? Because I presume in Vallecano you didn't have too many going off long distances. So to be going to Colombia and Argentina and, and to Africa, to be working out whether they are fit to play a few days later is a challenge for you. No, it's uh, I was used in Rayo Vallecano, probably not top national teams, but I had African players playing World Cup. I had Falcao from Colombia. I had, I'm used to this time of of uh, late flights, uh, players arriving Friday and knowing not exactly if they are ready to play or not because of the rest issue. I think uh, everyone knows uh, him, his body better than probably coaches. We talk to them when we when they they come back from the national team, and I feel like everyone has come with no injury issues quite well. They, they've they trained all today and everyone is willing to help us this weekend. Um, obviously, you're still waiting for that first win. I know it's only been a handful of games. How are you feeling about the fact you haven't won yet, but I've had some tough games, the fact you've signed players who you haven't quite been able to get in the team yet, you've got injuries still coming back. Are you feeling still that people should still be patient with this team? No, it's uh, for sure. If you ask Pochettino, he will say the same. No, they have I don't know nine, ten injuries, and for sure he's willing to use I don't know Nkunku or use another player. But the things that happen, we knew, especially in the cases of Tyler and Alex Scott, that probably are the the ones that uh, uh, concern more, that uh, they were going to be out 
of the team for, for some weeks and we have to accept this. It's not that we are only thinking in the short term. Uh, we, we have enough players, we have numbers now, we have recovered. Uh, Tavernier helped us the other day, Adam Smith was on the bench, Dango has been training with us this this week, so we are slowly, slowly recovering players, important players for ma for us, and I think we are getting stronger. Yeah. Is Marcus Tavernier ready to start? Yeah, I think he is. He he played really well the minutes he he played the other day, and I think after these two weeks that were good, especially for for Marcus Tavernier, for Lloyd Kelly, who were coming back from injuries, Adam Smith, we could. This week, recover also Dango. So, especially for these players, they have been successful weeks. And just a final one for me, going back to what Mark started with on, on Dom Solanke. You mentioned, obviously, he wants to score more goals. I think six is his, his best Premier League season. Do you think if he gets to that stage where he is scoring maybe 15 a season, that the big clubs like Chelsea and Liverpool that he was already previously at would start to come knocking back for someone like him? I hope we find ourselves in that situation. That's a good sign uh, because uh, at the end it's not easy to score the, the goals you, you, you talked about in the Premier League. But I think he's doing really well. I'm not so concerned about the goals he scores. Uh, I ask him, I ask all the players, if you are on the pitch and the team is playing well, you have more chances to keep uh, playing, keep giving, uh, having the, the minutes. And he, he helps us a lot in, in different aspects of the game.